Welcome to the Heroes of Reality podcast, a podcast about the game of life and the hero's journey we all experience. Let's jump in with our host, Dylan Watkins, as he introduces today's guest. Welcome, young adventurers. Dylan here. On today's podcast, I have Dr. Gil Blander. He is an internationally recognized for his research in the basic biologies of aging and translating research discoveries into new ways of detecting and preventing age-related conditions. He leads a team of biology, nutrition, and exercise physiology experts and computing scientists at Inside Tracker, and has been featured on CNN Money, The New York Times, Forbes, Financial Times, and the Boston Globe, to name a few. So without any further delay, I'd like to welcome Dr. Gil Blander. Hello, doctor. Hi, Hi Dylan. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for coming on the show. I'm, I'm excited to talk to you about like all things DNA, optimal health related, age related diseases. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for this. So appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to first get started with just a little bit um, of your journey. You, you do have a history of being in the, the, the med tech and biospace. So could you talk to me a little, a little bit about your journey uh, that led you to be basically the um, founder and CEO, uh, the chief science officer, I should say, um, for Inside Tracker? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a scientist in background, a PhD from the Weizmann Institute of Science uh, at uh, Israel. And then uh, uh, I uh, moved to MIT in 2002 and uh, performed a postdoctoral fellowship at MIT. Um, and uh, I done it there because uh, I done it in the best lab that studied aging in the in the world. Uh, I spent five years there, and then during that time I uh, realized that I can contribute more to humanity if I start my own company, uh, a company that will allow people to live longer, better life, uh, and. Uh, a couple of years later, I founded this Insta Tracker, and the idea is to help people to live longer, better life based on what's happening inside their body. So we're looking at the, their blood biomarkers, we're looking at the, their DNA, we're looking at their activity tracker data. All of that allow us to see a, a high-definition view of their body, and based on that, we can give them recommendation what food to eat, what supplement to take, what exercise to do, and what lifestyle changes to perform in order to live longer, better life. Mm, that's awesome. And so, I mean, a lot of this stems around like regenerative medicines and longevity. What are your thoughts around that? What are your thoughts around regenerative medicine and longevity and the, the impact that it's going to have on us as, as mankind? So regenerative, you are talking about stem cells? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, stem cells, uh, th there is a lot of uh, interesting... Uh, data about stem cells. Actually, recently, uh, Professor David Sinclair from Harvard uh, Medical School published a paper that showed that uh, actually you can uh, uh, take a, a, a blind mice and uh, using uh, stem cells uh, allow it to see again. So definitely the stem cells can allow us to, in a way, they can, can allow us to replace uh, organs. Uh, eye is one of them, but uh, uh, there is some data about liver and other organs, so it's definitely an interesting uh, uh, direction to take in order to, uh, in the long run, allow us to live longer, better life. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, as I read that study a little bit, it's a bit cruel. They they crushed the mice's eyes, uh, that the optical piece. I was like, oh, that's pretty sad for the mouse. At least some of them get their eyesight back, but um, yeah. you know, all in the name of science on that one. Uh, so, for you personally, again, what are the most what are the most exciting areas um, of like uh, Inside Tracker and, and being a part of this, um, uh, really helping people predict their health? What are, what about these things really excite you? Yeah, all of that is a, a really exciting, and specifically uh, to allow a person to understand what's happening inside the, his body. It's it's really hard to know because you can look great from the outside, but uh, when you look inside, you might have a lot of issues. And the only way to know is to test, because if you don't test, you don't know. Uh, and then uh, what is, uh, uh, in addition to that, then when you know what's happening, you need to have a, a plan of intervention. What should you do in order to uh, improve your body? And that's very hard to do because uh, there, there is so much data in the scientific literature. And uh, for the average consumer, it's very hard to know. It's very hard to know what is uh, scientific valid and what is not valid. 
So I think that the, the fact that we can first tell you what is the problem and second, based on that, giving you a, a plan of intervention to reach your uh, goal, that's something that uh, is very unique to Insta Tracker. And uh, I think that it's very exciting, at least for me. Yeah, you're right. There is kind of like a mountain of data that pops up. And then the hard part is like, great, now what? I mean, so many people yeah. have biofeedback rings and other types of devices where they get this data, but they just kind of yeah. don't know how to take action. So then in terms of like uh, with Inside Tracker, the, you know, what are the couple of the major areas that you focus on that, that people have a hard time parsing through all the data that you can help kind of like uh, make it very simple and streamlined for them to take action with? Yeah, so we start by, again, testing you and you can uh, get tests and I call it inputs. So we can look at your blood, we can look at your DNA, we can look at the data from activity trackers and we can look at all of them together. And based on that, we can find what are the issues that you have. The next step is for you to choose a goal. So the goal can be, I want to sleep better, I want to lose fat, I want to run faster, I want to de-stress. And we have a, around 15 goals like that. Um, and then when you choose the goal and we uh, know what are the issues that you have, and also we are te you're telling us a lot of information about yourself, your age and gender and ethnicity, and how much alcohol you drink, and. Uh, what is a consumption of a, a specific kind of food, we build a plan that is very personal for you. And this plan will uh, allow you to hopefully improve the level of the biomarkers that are not optimized. And when you test again, hopefully it will be better. Yeah, that's awesome. So then the plan I'm assuming it revolves around nutrition, diet, health, is it, is it supplements as well? Is that how 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 far out there do you go with using what I call uh, maybe exotic um, yeah. uh, sources of, of medication? Like how far out there do you go, and what are the what are the areas that you dive into? Yeah, it's a great question. So we, we are starting with food, and the, I'm sure that you know there are a lot of kind of food in the world. And mm -hmm. if you look at the average American on an average week, we consume only 20 kind of food on average. So we eat uh, chicken and uh, dairy and uh, egg and uh, cucumber and uh, tomato and maybe potato. Um, but there are actually 8,000 different kinds of food that are available for us. So basically we, we are using uh, uh, 20 out of 8,000. So the first uh, uh, goal that we have is to allow you to expose you to, as you call it, exotic kind of food. And, uh, but then direct you to the right kind of food that's good for you. Blueberry might be great for me, but might not be good for you. Uh, the same with banana might be good for me, but not good for you. So we are, tr we are starting with food because the food is uh, basically the drug of choice. Mm -hmm. I always believe that uh, we need to move the uh, drug cabinet from the bathroom to the refrigerator and uh, try to really use the food as the drug of choice. And uh, I think that uh, uh, that uh, is a very excited, exciting uh, direction. And then, as you said, we are also using supplement as a recommendation. Mm -hmm. All the supplement that we recommend, and by the way, all the food that we recommend are a, a food or supplement that have been shown uh, specifically in a peer-reviewed scientific publication that it can help you to improve the, this specific biomarker. So, for example, if you have a, a low iron, we'll recommend to you a, a specific kind of food that will allow you to increase the iron. Um, mm -hmm. If you have a, a high glucose, we'll recommend to you a specific kind of food that will help you to uh, uh, improve your um, glucose, but we also uh, use supplement or recommend supplement whenever there is a, a, a good evidence in the literature. So I have a battery of a few tens supplement that uh, passed our very rigorous uh, review uh, and mm -hmm. they are, uh, have been shown to allow people to improve the level of their biomarkers. We are also not uh, recommending a, a specific biomarker or specific food to everyone. It's based on your age and gender and ethnicity and athletic activity. And then we have some uh, exercise recommendation and some uh, lifestyle recommendations. So basically, uh, if you look at that, you have uh, 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 thousands of options, theoretically options that you can have, but based on your uh, demographic information, based on your biomarker level, and based on your goal, we are pinpointing them to around 10 to 20 different recommendations that you can select and you select some of them that you like into an action plan. Mm -hmm. And then this action plan appear on your uh, smartphone. And uh, uh, we're expecting you to check in every day and say, hey, I ate this food and I took this supplement and I done this exercise and I done yoga. 
Um, and after that, we, we have seen, uh, based on the publication, based on the research that we've done, that uh, a significant amount of our users that follow our recommendation uh, make a significant improvement of their blood biomarkers. That's awesome. So then uh, to rephrase back is that you have people basically pick, what are the goals? What ultimately is it, is it? Is it health and fitness? Is it performance? Is it, what is the what is the desired result that they want in terms of some sort of aesthetic change or internal health change? They pick that and then you have them go through a battery of, of tests, uh, surveys and blood markers and other things. I'm guessing you hook up like a CGM device, like some sort of like Abbott or something on, do you know, for, for like- No, no, not yet, not, not no. yet. We, we, are you... looking into the, we are looking into that. Uh, what, what, we, what we are doing is before we are adding another kind of input, we mm. want to be sure that the recommendation that we'll give you are meaningful and uh, vetted. Yeah. So if, and we are not sure yet that the data about the CGM is good enough that uh, based on that, I can tell you eat more banana or less uh, cucumber. Uh, so, so we're looking into that data and it's the same with the microbiome. It's the same story. Uh, there is a lot of buzz around it, but uh, the bottom line is uh, that if I know that you have this kind of bacteria in your gut, I'm not sure that I can tell you a lot about change your nutrition and uh, change your exercise. Uh, because there is not enough peer-reviewed scientific publication about that. So we, we are trying to give uh, the right value for our users. And mm. if we don't see 100%, if we are not 100% sure that there is a value, we won't recommend you to do that test or to uh, take this uh, recommendation. So is it, is it primarily, is it, is it in terms of the data that you're getting, one is the questions, and so you understand that like the quantitative or qualitative data of what's coming through. But in terms of the data samplings you're getting is the DNA, the DNA tests and the blood markers. Those are, are those a sample, is that the sample sets that are coming in terms of biofeedback? For yeah, data? so we have, yeah, we have DNA data. Uh -huh. uh, we have uh, blood data. Uh -huh. And we have data from uh, activity trackers. So we are connected currently with Fitbit and uh, Garmin. Yeah, yeah, we actually sure. recently connected to Garmin. And now we are working on connection with the uh, Apple Watch. So, so we should cool. have that uh, soon as well. And uh, what is nice about that is that, uh, um, so DNA is once in a lifetime. You test it once and basically show your destiny. Mm -hmm. um, or your risk uh, uh, for a specific uh, uh, um, uh, direction. For example, you have high risk for high glucose, but you need to do it once. You, it doesn't make sense to test it every year. Then blood is uh, most of the, uh, our users are testing every six months or every year. So it's not very frequent, but the value is huge. So I, I see blood as a very high mountain because uh, uh, a lot of our users, and even myself, uh, a week before I'm testing, I'm starting to eat better. I'm starting trying to sleep better. I'm not, because I want to, uh, to get the result the best as, as I can. Yeah. And then you have the data from the wearables, and that data come every day. If you want to, if you really want to, you can receive the data every 20 milliseconds or something like that. So you have a lot of data. The value is much lower, but it's the frequency is much higher. So you have a lot of uh, hills between the mountains of the blood test. Mm -hmm. And those seals can tell you a lot about your sleep and resting heart rate and uh, HRV and other. And that can uh, allow us basically to give you a recommendation between the, uh, or to adjust uh, your route between the big mountains of the blood test. So all of that together, giving you a very good picture. And also uh, if you look at the cadence, it's a, it's a very interesting cadence and a way for you to, uh, to go forward. I, I like that. You're right, because um, <clears throat> the blood markers is kind of like a, it's kind of like driving while looking in the rear of your mirror, right? It's already happened. You already got it. It's there. Mm -hmm. It's done. It's over with. So you really need to have some sort of actionable metrics that you can kind of point towards that allows to let you know that you're moving in the right direction. And that's where a lot of the bio, well, the the, the wearables come into play. Um, you know, I have a, uh, I have one of the wearables. I think it's like Rudolph or Randolph. It's a scale. It's Bluetooth that syncs with my Apple mm -hmm. phone. So I step on it and it knows my weight. So there's no line. You can't, you can't get around the whole weight bit, but yeah. you can get on that type of thing. It syncs through Apple watch syncs with everything else, which is awesome. Um, and I think that's really important because then you can, you're right. Cause as you do get closer to that big day that you're going to get measured, much like going to the dentist happens a couple times a year, 
doesn't mean you're not going to stop brushing your teeth a whole bunch right before you go to the dentist. You have that whole same tendency, like, I want to be good. Give me, give me the gold yeah. star. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I like, I like that, that pattern of behavior. Um, what have you, what are your thoughts right now about like 23 and me and Lumina being a drug discovery company? Like what are, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I think that 23 and me uh, uh, acquired a lot of users. Mm -hmm. And they are looking for a way for them to monetize their customers. Because mm -hmm. again, because DNA is once in a lifetime. Uh, and uh, also you cannot, uh, um, uh, uh, because it's a life, once in a lifetime, you monetize on them once. They need to mm -hmm. find another way of uh, revenue in order to uh, basically become a profitable company. So yeah. that's the way that they are going. Uh, the DNA have a lot of value. So uh, it sounds like the... Uh, other partners with them see the value and uh, I think that it's a, a, a very interesting endeavor and a very interesting uh, business model. What would you say to people that have general like concerns or fears about putting their DNA out into the wild, like sharing it with 23andMe or anybody else? Like, yeah. what, are your, what are your thoughts about that um, when people sometimes are, you know, concerned to share that, that depth of intimacy with their PI? Yeah. So, so I, f first, I want to say that uh, 23 and me and also us, you can uh, op in or out. So basically, you don't have to share it with us other than uh, to look at your uh, report. Uh, so I think that they are doing uh, very well with that. And uh, I think that uh, every company that deals with DNA should do that. If you don't want to share it with us and uh, have a, a, a internal research, and by the way, we are just doing internal research. We are not uh, letting any partner to to look at our uh, customer DNA, um, I think that that's, uh, that's great. And uh, second, we are living in the world that uh, anyway, everyone is exposed. You cannot be, uh, be hidden. Everything that you post on Facebook and on Instagram, and someone is uh, 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 looking at it and uh, someone is using. I heard yesterday that Amazon now, uh, I don't know if you heard about it, Amazon mm -hmm. is now using their uh, uh, um, Alexa speaker and uh, the Ring uh, 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 doorbell uh -huh. as a, a way to have an internet all over, the, they call it neighborhood uh, uh, internet or something like that. And huh. now there is a lot of uh, um, uh, um, concern about that, that uh, if you have that and then hacker come and uh, hack to Amazon, suddenly they, they have all the information of your, uh, uh, of your uh, basically, of, of your house or all the information that uh, uh, they uh, acquired. Uh, even uh, today, when you are talking on, uh, uh, taking a WhatsApp call and you're talking about, I don't know, I, I want to go, go for camping, suddenly on Facebook, you can see a, a camping advertisement. So definitely yeah. Facebook is listening to you all the time. Um, so I think that it's, we are living in the era that uh, uh, it's very hard to hide. And um, I think that the, the value of uh, uh, the information is much higher than the, the risk, in my opinion. I have, uh, uh, by the way, my 20 and me and my Instant Tracker account is open to uh, a lot of people. Everyone that wants to see Instant Tracker, I'm giving them my login and password. I don't, I'm not worried about it, but I understand that people are worried about it. Mm. And what we are doing at InstaTrack, I cannot say what 23 and me are doing. We are uh, uh, taking the security very seriously and the privacy very seriously. Uh, we have a, a, a security officer. We have engineers that working only on security and all the time uh, uh, trying to be sure that everything is okay. But I'm sure that uh, everyone that listened to the news in the last uh, uh, week or so, or months or so, you heard that uh, all the big uh, companies are, uh, have been attacked by ransom attacks. So it's basically happened all, all over. You, you see banks uh, happening for them. You see even the government uh, uh, a few months ago. So I, I'm saying uh, we, we are doing our best. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that the value of the DNA and the data of the DNA is higher than the risk, in my opinion, because I'm not sure what uh, someone can do with your DNA other than if you are a criminal and you... Uh, done some uh, uh, a bad act, and then they can the police can uh, uh, know that it's you based on your DNA. I'm not sure that what else uh, someone can do with your DNA. Um, so that's my opinion. Got it. Okay. Well, it's really interesting. You're right. It's it's very. I mean, it's very personal. It's about as personal as it gets. it's you. It's your it's your yeah. DNA broken down and yeah. into these different um, you know sequences that that make you up. And so, yeah, I'm not too sure what people could do other than they can make like targeted specific 
tax or it would be a very, very labor intensive way to attack you and probably yeah. very expensive yeah. Um, yeah. if there's anything about it. But it's one of those things like same thing with like personal information and the fact that there's bots that can scrape everything of you on Facebook and know you so intimately. I guess it's just one of those things it's, it's, you know, when people can have control over your data, when you have no idea that this much information exists about you, um, yeah. you I guess it gets, it gets people get concerned and fearful, but you're right. Knowing, getting your data out to other people for experts to look at it, to see, well, maybe you have a tendency for a uh, predisposition for glaucoma or some other disease or some other problem, getting it out there and getting the help on it as fast as possible is super beneficial. But I just think people are very, you know, uh, we our data is being harvested so much. It's top of mind, even though yeah. you know, who's going to really care that there's a, a folder of data sequenced of someone's name somewhere. It's the same thing with like the social yeah. media and everything yeah. else. Um, with that, assuming we have the data, um, and, and this is going forward and we're able to leverage this, how do you see CRISPR playing out in the next couple of decades? What are your, what are your thoughts on CRISPR and this DNA and everything that we can do with it? What, how do you see it all playing out over the next couple of decades with, um, mankind? Yeah, so uh, I think that CRISPR is a very uh, exciting technology. And uh, if I recall correctly, a few, very recently, the, there was a paper that showed that uh, you can uh, even fix uh, sickle cell anemia using a, a CRISPR. So basically you collect the, the cells and then you change it and then you inject them back to the, to the body. So I, I think that that's the first disease that have been shown that CRISPR can uh, fix. And I think from here, the sky is the limit. So everyone that have a, a, a specific a, a genetic a, a disease, I think that CRISPR can, a, can help. Um, and again, if we're looking at a aging, a, one of the model of aging is basically a decline of a, a, the um, activity of specific organs. So if you have an issue like that, you can, uh, maybe you can use uh, CRISPR to revert it. And uh, if you know what are the genes that are uh, responsible for that, and maybe you can uh, rejuvenate the, this organ. So I think that there is a lot of potential, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that we are still very early with that. So um, I'm not really sure yet what, what will be the use of that in the future. Kind of interesting. Yeah. It's, fast, it's fascinating that you can, you know, before we kind of had that shotgun approach to uh, gene swapping, mix them together, hope things mm -hmm. could work out. Now with CRISPR, you can slice out very specific sequences and blocks and mm -hmm. say, okay, I want this taken out and this put in, which we, you know, again, it does, we do feel a bit like a monkey with a, sh yeah. with a, with a grenade or a shotgun. We yeah. don't necessarily know until we start to map out everything. What, um, looking at like the CRISPR and all those other ones and not even saying that saying we, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen with that. You mentioned before David Sinclair and his, uh, the, I'm sure he wrote the book, I believe called lifespan. You're, oh, um, yeah, you're, you're looking at that. Um, do you look at death and aging as something that's in that something that is correctable? Is that something that you believe is possible that you can, you can end aging? Is that when your thoughts with that, like, can you talk to me about that and where yeah. we're at with that technology? Yeah, so it's it's a very good question, and actually, I, uh, I believe it or not, I started a podcast about uh, that, and we call it longevity by design. So uh, we are uh, interviewing the best uh, uh, scientists that research aging uh, in in the world, uh, and uh, we just started, so we have only a few episodes uh, out there. Um, so one of the person that we interviewed that uh, she's not on the uh, she's not out yet. We just interviewed her a few weeks ago. She's uh, working on a, a long-lived organism. Uh, a, one of them called a, a, a naked mole rat, which is a sort of a rat that is naked. Yeah. But if you look at rat, rat live like three years, and she, uh, this uh, organism live like thirty years, and they are the same size. So that's interesting because the model of uh, uh, aging is uh, saying that uh, uh, a creature that uh, is heavier live longer. Another uh, uh, um, uh, kind of animal that she is uh, uh, researching is uh, uh, whales. And she found wow. that uh, uh, one of the whales that she found, uh, she uh, succeeded to date him that he was uh, 212 years old. 
So even uh, uh, mammal can uh, reach to 200 and something, which is uh, uh, very interesting. So that's, wow. that's one, one way to look at it. Now, in addition to that, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, there was a, a very interesting paper was published. I think that it was in science. And they uh, basically tried to, they, they were looking at a big uh, data set of a, 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 a CBC, complete blood count. Uh, mm -hmm. From uh, I think the data the data set was very big, maybe two hundred thousand people or something like that, um, from the UK, and they try to see uh, with the uh, CBC they, they try to use it to calculate the uh, biological age of those uh, uh, people, very mm -hmm. similar to the inner age that we have. But they, are, they just use CBC because CBC is something that uh, everyone that tests in his life uh, tests CBC. So it was easier for them to look at a lot of data sets. And using some computational bio biology, uh -huh. they found that uh, the theoretical uh, uh, limit for us is 150 years or something like that. Oh, really? So that was an interesting the theoretical uh, 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 biology uh, um, publication. Um, now, if you ask uh, David Sinclair, as you said, he will say that you can live forever. And uh, I tend to agree with him. I don't see a reason why we can't. It's all a matter of uh, uh, um, the investment. So if we will take even someone like us today and uh, uh, treat him well, like what InstaTracker is trying to do. So instead of uh, eating junk and uh, not moving and uh, doing other, even that can increase your longevity by, uh, I would say, 15 to 20 years. You see wow. it in a, a, you see it in a, a, there is a good example, I think, in the, I think that it was in Chicago, that you can mm -hmm. compare what they call the urban desert, the places that, uh, they call it urban deserts because they don't have a, a fresh fruit and fresh uh, vegetable in that area, all the area that uh, have a, a, a lot of uh, po uh, poverty. Um, mm -hmm. And if you compare those area to the area of the suburbs of Chicago, let's say, it might be the lifespan might be the difference, and they might be one or two miles apart. The the difference in the lifespan might be fifteen to twenty years. Okay, so uh, just by uh, 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 taking and doing a good a good life a good uh, lifestyle changes, and uh, maybe I don't know having an air condition at a warm day and having a heat on the cold day. And uh, eating well and uh, and uh, uh, don't have too much pollution and so on. You can uh, there is a data that shows that you can live uh, around 20 years longer. But then if you are starting to uh, have some more like those intervention what we described before CRISPR and uh, maybe uh, other and maybe find some uh, specific uh, small molecules like what again David Sinclair and other are trying to do. Uh, you might uh, be able to to live much longer, and it's very hard for me to say what is the uh, what is the limit. I don't know. It's it's a very good question. It's, it's fascinating. So then we got just levels of belief. The one hundred and fifty being the the our potential without any <clears throat> massive intervention, exactly. right? Exactly. Versus versus limitless. If you're just replacing parts of the body, yeah. uh, probably uh, maybe possibly uh, just not you know, re-cloning the, the brain or I think that'd be the, the only one organ that might be a little yeah. difficult. Everything else, we can kind of hot swap it out while you're still moving. I could, I yeah, could I watch, I, I watch a series, it's called 100. I don't know if you've seen it at Netflix. And mm, actually I, there- I haven't seen it. Yeah, so there, the, the, <laughs> the, the, there was a colony in uh, some humans that moved to a different uh, um, uh, planet. Uh, and they found a way that you can take basically your brain into a, a stick. To, Dylan? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can uh, hear you. But uh, I think that the, my video is frozen. Uh, so, so they um, they cloned the, their brain into a stick, a memory stick, and then they could uh, move it from uh, from person to person. So basically, that's how they live for hundreds of years. Uh, so that's an interesting idea. Um, so yeah. Question. Would you do it though? That's the, that's the whole Elon Musk, Neuralink, plug your brain into a computer. Uh, it's yeah. a, that's a, it's a, it's a weird, that gets into the weird existential area. If you get, if you get downloaded into a computer and you make a copy of yourself, is that still you, you know, can you, yeah. can we, can, I, I, that seems that, that far, like the regenerative medicine, the stem cells, uh, just being healthy, swapping out parts all seem 
feasible to me. That whole part when you start to like download and compute, it's okay. Well, technically it's a circuit board, but it is your brain. Yeah. Is it, or is it, do you need to just, you just need to clone your limbic system and then just surgically attach it? Like, I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, me neither. Me neither. I okay. Don't. <laughs> okay. That's, it's fascinating. It's super fascinating. And it gets in the weird, like, Oh, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a, a science as witchcraft. Um, yeah. what do you like? So let me ask you this in terms of like, not so far away, but sooner with like inside track or with that, what are some, you talk about some, a certain patterns of behavior, uh, just moving to a better area. That's got the right environmentals that allow you to have access to the right stuff, to clean up your body, to clean up what you're doing. What are some, what do you think are some non obvious things that you've discovered that are actually healthy characteristics, things that people may not totally be able to do that, that are available. We seem to have lost Gil here for a hot second. We're going to give him a second to come back. I think that question was so powerful that it might have broken the internet. There's a challenge there that maybe Gil's internet got broken with such a powerful question. So I'm going to continue to talk to see if he comes back into the mix. But if you think about it, what are some non-obvious things? Uh, David Sinclair, you know, he takes that, what is it? For, where he takes metformin. He's trying to keep his glucose high or lower. He's just trying to keep it normal. That's one of the things that David Sinclair does. Um, there's a bunch of other tactics and things that people do to get their health up and active and, and really for longevity. I actually found a link a long time ago, by the way, people, as I'm waiting for Gil to come back, I'm gonna tell you some insightful things. I found a I found this one website a while ago that had all the best biohackers, all the best longevity hackers, and all of their tips and tricks and hacks and techniques that they used to actually like on a daily basis to do life extensions. Um, one of them is uh, intermittent fasting, but there's also a bunch of other ones that they can do that are uh, endogenous or you know chemically induced or physical activities. There's a bunch of things you can do, but if you email me. Dylan at Reality Smash, if you're listening to this and say, hey, Dylan, I want that list. I want that list of what biofeedback people are doing um, in, in a daily basis, like Dave Ashbury, like Ben Greenfield, like all these other people, David Sinclair. I'll send it to you. Uh, just message me, say Dylan at RealitySmash.com. I want that list of biofeedback people and I'll get it to you. So I don't know if Gil's going to come back. I don't know if his internet crashed. I'm not too sure what happened on his side. So we're going to wrap this podcast up. It was really fascinating starting to talk to him, especially with the whole longevity inside tracker data stick. So that's what I got for you guys. Unfortunately, this is the internet. This is a live podcast. Um, and, and Gil, uh, got dropped, um, on the possibly his backside while going through this. So that's what I got for you all. Have a blessed and beautiful day. Uh, thank you for being a part of the podcast and uh, Gil, I know you're not here right now, but just know much love my friend. This does happen. I don't take it personally. It's not me. It's you. I'm sorry you went away. Unless we lost connection, then I apologize. But this has been an interesting podcast. I do appreciate Gil, and uh, we might have him back in the future. Message me if you've got more questions for Gil or anything else. Uh, by the way, uh, just in case you guys are interested, one last plug. I'm running an event coming up here June 15th and 19th called Transformational VR, teaching people the framework. Oh, Gil's back. Gil's back. Folks, guys, we're gonna bring Gil back. What up, Gil? Welcome back to the party, man. <laughs> Even computers are not living forever. <laughs> Sorry, my computer uh, crashed. It's all good, man. I totally get it. I, I just I assumed the question was so powerful that we crashed the internet on your side. That was my assumption. I could have been wrong, but that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna be telling myself and, and anybody else that's listening. So um where we were talking uh last was uh what the question I was asking you was. Um, is there any non-obvious things that you've seen through doing the data analysis of all the people that have come through that are ways that people could possibly extend their life, rejuvenate their lives, be, be strong and healthy, things that stood out to you that like, oh, that's unique and in interesting, um, non-obvious things that you've discovered in your process of running Inside Tracker? Yeah, um, I think that the, the data science is very powerful. And mm -hmm. you can look at data science for a cohort, basically looking at a lot of people, but you can also look at data science of one person, especially when you are uh, sampling the person a lot of time during uh, his life. So uh, 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 data from activity tracker is a very, a very good example of that. 
Mm-hmm. So if you think about it, uh, we receive from you your resting heart rate every day. Or we receive from you the, your uh, uh, deep sleep or REM sleep every day. Um, so, so taking all of that and then starting to look at that and see what, what, uh, what is the effect, for example, of uh, your exercise on your resting heart rate. Mm. Is it uh, better for you to exercise in the morning or the evening? Is it better for you to um, to do yoga or to do uh, uh, I don't know uh, to to lift a uh, uh, weight? Uh, mm. All of that is a, a very interesting uh, uh, information that you can get just by uh, following that and compare it with uh, uh, the data from the activity tracker. Um, also, you can find what is the best time for you to, to go to sleep based, based on your REM sleep and deep sleep and total sleep. So th- this is something that is uh, very unique for a specific person. Is a uh, coffee good for you or bad for you? I'm sure that uh, if you uh, open a men's magazine, uh, you will you will find 100 pay, uh, articles about that. 50 saying that it's good, 50 saying that it's bad. But is it? A, I cannot say if it's good for you or not good for you because if I want to know if it's good for you specifically, I need to look at your uh, data. So I feel that uh, those are uh, basically I call it the N of one experiment or uh, a quantified self experiment. It are uh, very interesting, and then you can look at a cohort. Basically, look at a lot of people, and based on that, uh, for example, in blood. And then come and say, hey, someone like you, someone in your age and someone in your agenda or someone that have the signature of the biomarkers like you, what are the interventions that worked for him? And then based on that, I can come and tell you, hey, because your glucose is high and the LDL is high and the and your vitamin D is low, those are the best interventions that will work for you because someone like you, uh, it worked very well for him. Um, so those are a, a very interesting and very... Uh, a personalized approach to give you a, a let's say a recommendation that they have a higher chance to work got it that's great it's really interesting because it, you're also leveraging the social information for the personalized response yeah um, which is really interesting and also time as a heuristic which is cool the so you can see like oh well not we know that eating hell i i can get, almost guarantee that um a salad is better than a mcdonald's cheeseburger Pretty yeah. much, I pretty much. But do, what kind of salad? What spikes your heart rate? What does that look like? How does it? How do you? How do you respond to it? Exactly. Those are all. Those are all details that it's personal. So it's like that. You know, it's like it's that nuances uh, of how everything how everything works. And then I do like the idea of like you're looking at lookalike groups. You look and say, okay, yeah. uh, you're like Bob or someone else over there. And so we can find out that Bob had these problems and Bob fixed these problems. And so yeah. you can fix ideally your problems if you look at Bob's results. Which is really right. neat. Which is really, really, really neat. Uh, have you ever have you ever recommended something like beer or something like oh you need to have something like you know what you need, smoke three packs of cigarettes a day and that's gonna be great for you not like any no one else but just you like, is there anything yeah. I'm just really I'm really fascinated no, with that type of stuff. No, not like not uh, smoking for sure. Yeah, but uh, alcohol. Uh, there is uh, uh, some people that alcohol is uh, less toxic for them than other. And uh, one of the toxicity of the alcohol is uh, basically the effect on your liver uh, mm-hmm. because the liver detoxifies the, uh, the alcohol. Um, and some people have, a, a, let's say, a better activity of the liver. And we can find whether your liver is a, a good or not based on uh, blood biomarkers that are uh, basically looking at liver enzymes. So if the liver enzymes are leaking from the liver, we know that you have damage in the liver. So some people are much more sensitive, and even if they are drinking one uh, glass of wine or beer or whatever, uh, it makes a, a, a spike in their liver enzyme, but others can drink uh, 10 uh, glasses a day and they are not. So that's, uh, again, going into the personal, uh, personalization. Beer is not, or wine is not bad, but it uh, might be bad if you are very sensitive. Yeah, yeah wine is not bad, you are. Fix, you're, you're too sensitive to wine. No, it, it's really interesting. There's like a weird macho-ness inside of me that goes, I can handle it. I can handle my liquor. Mm-hmm. Like sign me up for that. There's a weird, there's a weird proof thing that makes me want to like, and maybe not, maybe it's not, maybe it's not the right move for me, yeah. but I'm like, I can handle it. Like it, it's just a really mm-hmm. interesting response I had to that. Uh, but you're right. Mm-hmm. It, it, I would be curious to know, you know, are these things, especially if you understand your habits, yeah. like your sensitivity yeah. to that, or maybe do you put on sunblock before you go out or, or whatever the thing might yeah. be? 
um, that 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 are you're susceptible and are these things that I, I think though with drinking there's like a weird prove your masculinity kind of thing that pops up um, when you when you talk about that type of thing but you're it's it's so interesting that you're, you're talking about the blood marker what um what are your what are your beliefs on like like intermittent fasting what are your things on diets like what's what what's your diet like in terms of that if you don't mind me asking yeah. like what sure. like, how do you look at that in terms of like the most effective use to to um for longevity and aging and, and all that versus yeah so intermittent in, intermittent fasting uh, uh, is a very interesting uh, uh, regime that have been started actually in the 1930s uh, what they found that when you feed uh, uh, rats in a, a limited uh, capacity of uh, um, of calories those uh, rats live up to 50 percent longer yeah. and then they went for mice and uh, uh, fish and other uh, creatures even monkeys and they showed similar results um, in human, the data show that uh, uh, fasting or intermittent fasting uh, can help you to optimize some markers that are a marker of longevity. Uh, for example, your blood pressure is going, uh, can go lower with that. Uh, you lose weight. Uh, your glucose and uh, uh, cholesterol will go lower. So there are a lot of benefits of uh, intermittent fasting. Uh, but uh, because we are living so long, it's very hard to prove that uh, we live longer if we uh, uh, fast. There are, there are some groups of people that are, are uh, living with a, a, a very low amount of calories for, I don't know, 10 years already. Uh, but still, it's very hard to prove that uh, uh, it will increase the, your lifespan. I strongly believe that it will, yeah. uh, but I don't have a strong evidence yet to, to say mm -hmm. that it is. That's good. No, it's an it's an interesting trade off. And also, I just can't I can't stop thinking about these poor rats. They're gonna be like half. They're gonna have eye patches. Be all yoked out rats and super smart from CRISPR. We're we're gonna we're gonna be making a serious trouble uh, for all mm -hmm. the all these rats that we're 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 yoking out on this on this whole thing. Um, what <laughs> what do you what is your ultimate goal when you're looking at um, inside track? You're looking at what you're trying to do. What's your What's your big vision with Inside Tracker? Um, is it to extend life forever, or what? What? What is? What is your mission and vision you have with Inside yeah. Tracker? Yeah. So, so I think that my mission is to allow people to live longer, better life, and uh, I think that the better is uh, maybe more important because you can live to. We just discussed before about uh, the theoretical uh, barrier, which is one fifty. But you can live uh, to, to 150, but the last 60 years or last 70 years, you will lie on the bed and connected with a lot of tubes. That's not cool and not fun. Nobody wants to do that. But if you can live to 150 and then uh, die like a fruit fly, basically die as uh, after you climb a mountain or uh, done whatever you like to do, that's much more fun. So I think that the health span is not less important than the lifespan. So uh, our goal is to increase the lifespan as much as we can but together with it, have the health span. So basically, uh, until your last moment, you will be in the best shape that you can and you enjoy life and spend time with your family and do whatever you like to do. That's awesome. Yeah. You technically want it to be as healthy as possible for as long as possible. Exactly. When you, can't, when you can't stop anymore. Everything all breaks at once. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. That's, that's beautiful. Um, with that, which is the goal of not only increasing the lifespan, but the health span. So you can feel incredible and optimal forever. Um, um, assuming a combination of uh, the feeling of Red Bull and Viagra uh, until you die all the way through the end. But what do you, what's your, what's the big dragon you have to slay? What's the, in terms of if that's the goal and that's the hero's journey that you're on, what is the big dragon that's preventing you from being able to make that happen? Pre preventing you mean inside tracker to make it happen yeah preventing inside tracker and happen if okay if that's yeah. the goal what's the obstacle yeah. standing in the way of that goal yeah i think that uh, um, we are not a a, a a silver bullet so it's not like uh, uh, do it once and that's it it's something that you need to be engaged and do it again and again and think about it every day uh and uh, be very uh, uh, aware that you need to do that. So it's not the easy way, it's the right way. 
and the right way maybe it's a bit longer. So I think that uh, uh, currently um, our users are more educated and more determined and uh, uh, people, let's say type A people that really want to, to live longer, better life or would like to improve their uh, quality of life. So that's one barrier that we need maybe to dumb it down a bit and uh, uh, fit it to the average job. Um, mm -hmm. The second is the, uh, the health care system in the U.S. And yeah. um, it's very sad, but the health care system in the U.S., uh, I see it like a hotel and gym. Basically, uh, their goal is to fill the hospital because every time that you are filling a room in the hospital, the hospital receive a lot of dollars from the uh, government or from the insurance. And to fill a gym because there are a lot of machines there, and every time that someone doing MRI, the hospital receive a lot of money. So what we are doing is more like preventive medicine. And, and the, the currently, uh, uh, there is not a big incentive for the, let's say, the insurance, the insurance company and for the hospitals to, to do that because they want, their goal is for you to go ahead to the hospital, be broken, and then they will fix you. So I think mm -hmm. that there, there is a, a, some... A, a, the, the incentive for the healthcare system is not the right incentive. And because of that, they don't have a good reason to adopt something like in such hmm. Would So then, so uh, a couple things. So one being, if you're highly motivated as a person and you're willing to put in a ton of work, then it's a good fit, but it's not a silver bullet. Like you can't take this magic pill and, and make all of your years yeah. of poor decision-making with diet and fitness go away with a with a silver bullet so it's just the effort now you're going to have the knowledge of what you need to do it's applying that knowledge in a way and getting people to apply that knowledge when ultimately it's, yeah. it's their choice and the second one is the way that our healthcare system is set up is that it really it, it really wants us to to focus on getting treatment and and making sick people less sick but versus preventing people from becoming sick in the first exactly place. How would you, if you could, if you could wave a, a magic inside tracker wand at the, uh, at let's just say the U.S. health system, how would you, would you do universal basic health care? What would that look like? What would be your takeaway if you, if you could restructure the infrastructure yeah. of this, of um, yeah. health system? What would that look like uh, to to really um, help yeah, you achieve the goal? Yeah, it's very simple. We basically come to the, we'll come to the hospital and let's assume that the population that they affiliate to this hospital is one million people. Mm -hmm. You will pay the hospital a, a fee that it doesn't matter if they are coming to the hospital or not, just the fee that they, they will receive. So their incentive suddenly will be that I want to keep the hospital empty because then I need le less nurses and less, less uh, physician and I need less machines. So then suddenly insert tracker is very appealing because their goal is actually the same. The goal of the person is to stay healthy and live well. But currently the goal of the hospital is not like that. They want us to come and uh, go there and uh, be sick and fill the room and fill the machines. So I think that it's basically moving from a, a sick care to population-based care and preventative care, which is not mm -hmm. uh, what's happening today. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like yeah, <clears throat> you need that middle person, be, you know, be, it's like the blood markers and, and getting the, the daily biofeedback uh, or the. Exactly. Um, yeah. So you want to, you want to correct that course before they hit that wall, before they hit that hospital yeah. and they go, okay. And it's like, Hey guys, I'll tell you what, the whole goal is that we want to keep your insurance as low as possible. The way you do that is by being healthy. The way you do that is with inside tracker. And the way that you do that is just follow the steps yeah. and, and do what your body yeah. responds to. That's yeah. awesome. Um, I know you have a hard stop here at the top of the hour, so um, I'm going to come towards the end here, and I want to say, is there anything else you'd like to let people know about um, before you can tell them how they can get a hold of you and, and your company? Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, even if you're not doing InstaTracker, there are a, a few things that uh, uh, are uh, common sense, health common sense that uh, – uh, it will be good for your audience to do. So uh, try to eat uh, food that is not uh, industrial. So mm -hmm. eat uh, uh, fruit and vegetable. Try not to eat too much uh, potato chips and uh, anything else that comes from a package. Try to eat more and cook at home instead of uh, going to restaurants because it's uh, a lot of the food there is uh, filled with uh, sugar, uh, fat, and uh, uh, salt. And, uh, yeah. None of them is good. 
um, try to exercise, try to sleep well, try to be distressed, and uh, try to enjoy life. So that's uh, what I recommend everyone. Yeah, that's, a, that's the tricky one, guys. Yeah, be healthy, eat well, move, and enjoy all of that. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. the process. Love it. Yeah. Um, and if people want to find out more about your company and what you do, how, how do they how do they find out? Yeah, they can come to instatracker.com and uh, all the information is there. Uh, they can then uh, uh, choose the right plan, uh, either go to Quest Diagnostic and get tested, or uh, uh, if they don't want to or they can't, uh, we can send a, a technician to their house that they can take blood. And if that's too hard, we can send a home key to their house. And if they have the data from the physician, they can upload the data from the physician. The same with DNA. If they have a data from 23 Me or Ancestry, they can upload it. If they don't have it, we have our own uh, DNA kit. And connection of the uh, wearable is very easy. Uh, just uh, uh, connect the wearable to our app. And currently, we have Fitbit and Garmin. And uh, very soon, we'll have uh, Apple Watch as well. Awesome, yeah. I'm looking for the Apple Watch part. Um, I'll get on that one. So, uh, yeah. uh, doctor, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate you coming on, uh, sharing your knowledge, your insights, your stories, your lessons inside Tracker. I, I really appreciate this. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and uh, I will see you in another reality. Thank Bye you so now. much. You got it. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye now. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Heroes of Reality podcast. Check out heroesofreality.com for more episodes. While you're there, you can also take the Heroes Quiz to find out what kind of hero you are. Or, if you have a great story and want to be on the podcast, tell us why your hero's journey will inspire others. Thank you for listening. See you all.